guest, everyone, everyone, you're not going to believe this. One of the sexiest men in real estate, one of the most amazing people that I've ever met, one of my best friends. You guys are going to be blown away at how just awesome this guy is. And if you've ever had excuses for why you don't do something, Matt is just going to blow that away for you. It is going to change your perspective. Everybody on the call, say, hey, Matt Fedick. And <clears throat> Matt, are you there? Good morning, everybody. Matt, thanks for joining me, buddy. And you're doing me an extra big favor because you're on a little weekend off. You're down at the beach, as far as I know, in Delaware. Is that correct? I sure am. Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Nice. Rehoboth, right? You got it. I got to go there and hang out with you. Remember those ice cream cones that we had with, like, the chocolate sprinkles on top? Those were awesome. No, yeah. what I remember is kicking your, I remember kicking your butt in the ring toss. Oh, yeah, you did. You did school me in the ring toss. That is a, that is a truth, my friend. So let's, <clears throat> let's get this started. Hey, Matt, if people wanted to connect with you, where would they connect with you at? And connect with me at, at Matt Fedick on Twitter is fine. Okay. Hey, Emily, in the background, the woman behind the machine, why don't you send that out to all of our peoples, all of our peoples, and uh, let's do a quick introduction of our sponsors. Hey, Ryan from Rehoboth, he's on the call. You know Ryan, Matt? I do know Ryan. He's sitting in the room right next door. Oh, what up, Ryan? Okay. Hey, our calls always have a couple of sponsors people that make our lives better. Happy Grasshopper has been doing us some big favors. They pay us no money to be on the calls. It's just Dan's a, a creator of a product that I use. And he is also a friend, and he helps invite people to these calls. We can go today to happygrasshopper.com forward slash convert, and there's an assessment there that you can take that will help you figure out how to be better in real estate and one lucky person is going to win a very expensive amazing product called position me it's something that my team uses so go there happygrassnumber.com forward slash convert now okay we're also brought to you by Live City Guides. If you guys want to be the local expert and get vendors to pay you lots of money every single month so the product's absolutely free and it pays for all the other marketing and advertising that you're doing, check out our city guides. They'll send you the link if you want a demo, and they'll get my vendor advertising program. <laughs> but the coolest thing we're talking about, you know, the coolest product I'm excited about is how to get listing leads. We've been running uh, Facebook ads, sponsored posts, pay-per-clicks, email campaigns, uh, on valuations and this is the best way in this market to generate listing leads so if you need listing leads go to brevityvaluations.com or type into the chat box you would like a demo I'm telling you listing leads for under five dollars five dollars that's cheap that's cheap if you guys want a new listing for five bucks raise your hand hand raise your hand raise your hand people all right Okay, and the final sponsor is Brivity, the all-in-one system that allows you to manage, market, and communicate with your clients, with your leads, with your agents, and with your staff. Uh, Brivity is, I promise, the future. You're going to get rid of five or six different tools by the time we're done developing Brivity, maybe ten and it's going to change your little world. Brivity creates marketing pages like a virtual tour, a single single property website. It manages all your staff and all your tasks so you never forget about anything. It's amazing grace. I promise you. Every time you complete a, a task, the, the seller or buyer is notified, and they get created their own timeline to let them see everything that you're doing. We call that a transparency tool because you're being transparent with the activities that you do. When you start with Brivity, you start with my personal action plans, the things that my team actually does to run our business. If you want to demo that, let us know. Brivity will change your world, and it's only 40 bucks, you cheap butts. $40 to get rid of five things you pay 50 bucks for. That's 
That's amazing. The only cold lead is a dead lead. Let's actually get this party started. Emily, start the recording if you haven't already, people. Whew. Okay, Matt. Let's. Okay, Ben. Let's. Uh, I gotta take a breath. This is crazy. Oh. You're pretty uh, fired up for such an early morning out there on the West Coast. I'm artificially fired up. Five Hour Energies, FRS Energy Chews. I uh, I need a break, Matt. Do you get a kickback from those guys? <clears throat> from the energy people, I should. They should send you me could. three boxes. You need to add them as a sponsor. I know, I know. I'll work that out. Hey, Matt. So, how long have you been in the business? It'll be nine years in November. Just finished up eight years. Nine years. My goodness. Tell, let's go back in time. What did you do before real estate? I was a paramedic for five years and then a cop for just short of ten years. Wow. Thank you for your service to our amazing communities. Uh, so let's just kind of go through a little bit about not your leads but your story. Walk, walk us through your through your life and your in your business and how it's evolved to where you're at now. Okay. So, uh, like I said, I started off as a paramedic and then became a cop and all in the same town. And I'll tell you, it was a fantastic career. I loved all of it. Uh, it was fan it was just great to be out there with people and, and taking care of people. Uh, and it was just, it, it really fit me and my, and my personality. Um, what didn't fit me in my personality was this idea of not uh, – having compensation based on performance, right? That I, all of a sudden I would, I knew that I'd be making the same amount of money for the next 20 years with slight cost of living increases for the rest of my life. And nothing wrong with that. It's a, it's a, a rewarding career. There's nothing wrong with a steady career, but I knew that I had a desire uh, to, to build something, to be rewarded for my efforts, and that that was going to be outside of being a salaried person. So I decided to jump into real estate right at the end of 2006. So lucky me, I got to ride a wave of some really uh, great real estate time in 2006, 2007, and then here comes 2008. And good grief, rug got pulled out from underneath of us, and it was a little bit crazy. Um, you know, as the market crashed. So uh, I had a great start uh, both in police work, and I always tell everybody if you've ever heard me speak before. That I always got out of real that I got out of police work because I wanted to avoid working nights, weekends, and holidays. Huh. So real estate was the right option. That's how I picked real estate, honestly. Um, so that was part of it. So I got kicked up into real estate, had a couple of good years, and then the market crashed. And unfortunately, at the same time, in September of 2008, as the market was really shifting downward and slowing down, I got struck with a neurological illness. Uh, that had me in the hospital uh, quickly and, and shut down and unable to walk, unable to talk, unable to do anything for a, a period of time. Um, and uh, it was a real struggle. Real estate wasn't selling and I wasn't able to work and, and those were some real tough times there at the end of 2008, beginning of 2009. So what was, um, your, what was your business like that year and the year after? So in 2008, um, it you know, started off fairly strong. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember if I remember. We had probably settled 50 houses in 2008, which would have been my second full year in real estate. Um, and then in 2009, uh, you know, I was I was out sick. Uh, the medication and the things that I had to take had me uh, hospitalized for four days every three weeks to get uh, medication infusions that could only be done by IV. Uh, so I was you know, the market was down, and I was kind of down and out myself, and it was a real struggle. Uh, to be able to get out to work, and I think that year uh, still sold somewhere around 40 to 50 houses. So I did about in 09 what I did in 08. Okay. Well, while being in the hospital, you know, roughly one week a month or recovering from needing the medicine or or after you just got it. Yeah. So I was I was probably yeah, and, and you know the week before I go in. Um, I would feel kind of cruddy, and then kind of taking the medicine, and then afterwards. So I was, you know, I probably had 10 good days a month uh, to do that. And I, you know, the best thing that ever happened was I went to Masterminds in the spring of 2009, and I heard Gary Keller say, you know, have there ever been zero settled homes in the MLS? And of course we said no. And he said, then quit whining about the market. 
The market doesn't dictate your success. It only dictates who your customer is. Now go out and find the right customers. Hey, re and, repeat that, Matt, because I was not I was at that mastermind, but I didn't hear that, but that sounds really smart to me. You missed that, Ben? Great. So get, Gary asked us, he said, you know, we were, everyone was whining about how bad the market was and there was nothing going on, and Gary just looked everybody in the eye and said, tell me, you know, were there, are there ever zero settled homes in the market? Was there ever zero? And, of course, everyone said no. And he said, then don't let the market dictate your success. Or he actually said, the market does not dictate your success. It only dictates who your clients will be. Now go back and figure out who's buying and selling real estate and make them your clients. Wow. So, and, and that was 2009? Yeah, that was in, that would have been in March of 2009. And that was the real kick that I needed to hear, which was to stop complaining and whining about, oh, woe is me, I don't feel well, the market's down, this is never going to work. Um, and I just started looking around and, and I decided to embrace short sales because everybody, nobody wanted to take them. And I just decided to get out and learn how to do them really well and reached out to our good friends, Kevin Kaufman and Fred Weaver, who were doing short sales in Phoenix, and they invited me to come spend time with them in their office and, and really showed me how to do them. And then my, uh, by the middle of 2009, my business really started taking off. And, and what did you do? What did you end 2009 with? Uh, a little over 100 transactions. Okay. So to this day, you still have to – spend a couple days on IV, is that correct? Yeah, every month, I, uh, three days uh, three days a month. It's a nice day. I get it done at home, so it makes it a little bit easier. Uh, but I have a five-hour infusion three days in a row every month. And, uh, and prior to that, you feel that like a little crap. Bit, but I, don't, I don't dwell on it. Yeah. Prior to that, getting it, you feel a little crappy. Yeah, I don't have a lot of energy. It wears me down a little bit. So I'm at the end of my rope ready for it when it comes along. So in the middle of building this real estate career, what was your GCI last year? Last year, 1.3. So you made $1.3 million last year while having to spend roughly a week a month dealing with medical problems. And then on top of that, for some reason, you decided that you were going to run for public office. And what office did you get elected for? Uh, so I'm the mayor of our of small town USA where I live, just outside in the Philly suburbs. So Mayor Matt Fedick, with a debilitating medical issue that screws him up for uh, one week a month, and you're a backup EMT. Is that correct? I still uh, I still try to take a paramedic shift a month when when I'm in town and can do it. I like to keep my uh, certifications active, and I really enjoy it. So it's still a passion of mine. And then. All while you you're building this real estate team that that you have a really high net income. It's one of the things I like about your business is you you make really good money, not just gross really good money, but you also you've you've bought some some real estate brokerages and you're and you're building them as well. Is that correct? Yeah. So we have uh, the Keller Williams and Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, which I bought two years ago, uh, which was losing money, and now we're in a, a good profitable place. We've turned that around and. Uh, partners in Wilmington, Delaware, uh, where my sales team is, and uh, that market center has uh, come a long way as well. So it's been fun for me to, to diversify and, and have those opportunities, leadership opportunities as well. And, and this year, every time I talked to you, you were in another city doing what? So uh, I'm on the master faculty for Keller Williams University, so I teach a lot of the Keller Williams proprietary training programs uh, all over the country. And And... How many countries have you been to this year, or where have you traveled this year? Um, how many countries? Say that one more time. Where, where have you traveled? Because I know you're you're. Oh my gosh, this year. Joy's vacations, the vacation wise, not te not teaching, my friend. Oh, vacation wise. So uh, I was in London, Turks and Caicos, Italy. Uh, did to do Key West once, twice. Uh, where else? And you're he heading to. London, London again on Sunday. Yep. And then you go to Africa. And then I'm leaving. Yeah, and then I'm taking a month off to go to Africa, almost a month, 24 days. I'll be taking a 24-day trip to Africa, leaving on September 18th. So, guys, I'm not, like, putting Matt on the phone right now so that, that uh, I can make him brag about himself because he's a really humble person and I'm dragging this crap out of him. I'm putting him on the call because what 
I don't want to show like so many other webinars and, and conferences do is they put somebody on stage that does a lot of business but they have no life no relationships none of these things that are most important like, can I get a golf clap from all of you on the call right now about this type of person we get to learn from today are you kidding me Matt you you have a good life you take time off you work hard you use systems you're investing in other businesses uh, that that's that's why you're here today. So let's let's talk about list. How does your how do you get paid? Where, where are you getting your business from? Yeah, Ben. I, the only way that my business has been growing is to been to start getting back to the basics with prospecting. Um, we get uh, we, our leads for our buyer side have been really strong through IDX portals and and working those. Uh, but good old fashioned open houses. Uh, and prospecting, circle calling, FISBOs and expireds have absolutely become the basis for kind of the explosive growth that we've had in the last year. Okay, and uh, so your buyer leads come from an IDX. Did you get rid of Boomtown or do you have Boomtown? We have Boomtown. Yep, that's our main buyer IDX site. Yep. And then you, you have my homie Chris Smith. He has a product called Curator. Are you using that too? We are. We are using that on the seller side for us to manage seller leads, nurture seller leads, and to generate some activity out of Facebook. And Chris has provided a great product with Curator. Yeah, Chris is a good dude. Good dude. Uh, okay, so you're getting some buyer business from that. Let's talk about your uh, prospecting. Who are you calling? So uh, right now we're focusing on old expireds. Anybody that expired uh, within the last four years that hasn't relisted. And those have been really good leads for us, uh, telling folks about this shifted market and what the market looks like now. Uh, so we've been focusing on those. Uh, fresh expireds, um, we feel like we're comfortable now mastering FISBOs. And then lastly, circle calling, where we call just listed and just solds in our farming areas. And that really has, uh, I'll tell you, I kind of fought that for quite a while and wasn't excited about doing that. Uh, but now we've seen some really good success it's one of those things that can't be a hit and run. You can't do it once and expect a return. But when you call the same household the fifth time to talk about uh, another home that you listed or sold in their neighborhood, you can really start to see the results. Are you up for just role playing with me and just kind of telling me what you'd say to them? Sure. Let's do it. Go ahead. All right. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Mr. Kinney. Yeah. Hi, my name is Matt Fedick. I don't know if you remember, we spoke last month. I am your local real estate expert, and we sold your neighbor's home down the street at 123 Main Street. Did you see our sold sign? I, I, in fact, I did. Awesome. Hey, I wanted to let you know you were probably curious about the final sales price. If you recall, when we spoke last month, we listed the home for 310 and we actually ended up in a bidding war and sold it for 5000 over, and I wanted to know about the current market values in the neighborhood. How do you feel about the homes going over list price in your neighborhood now? Oh, are you saying that my home might be worth more than I think? It, it certainly could be. Are you interested in knowing what your home's currently worth? Uh, maybe. Okay. Well, if you would like to, uh, we like to spend about 15 minutes walking through your home just to check out the floor plan and condition so we can really give you an accurate price. If you're interested in doing that, I'd love to stop by this afternoon between 3 and 4, and if that's not convenient, Monday evening after 6 o'clock, which would be better for you? I get it. So you're, I like that because what you're saying is, hey, people on the call, hello, are you still there? Hello, everybody? Is there anybody out there, out there in the cold, feeling lonely, feeling old? Okay, you guys are there. Oh, I was, I was worried. What you're saying, Matt, is have, not having leads is not an excuse because basically you just call everybody in the neighborhood. Yeah, correct? absolutely. And, and the cool thing about it is the more you call them, the more, uh, the better received you are, right? The first time it seems awkward, second time it seems awkward. When it becomes a, a ongoing process and you don't give up, now it's kind of like, oh, so what are you calling to tell me this month? And, and that's helpful. And even if the call goes, no, we're not interested in the value, you know, the next thing that we bring up right away is we now have buyers looking in your neighborhood with no homes for sale. When you think about selling your home, will I be the first person that you call? I get it. Hey. Uh, everybody on the call, we're going to send out this webinar back to you, the whole recording. So you're also going to get the scripts we're going to talk about throughout the whole rest of the call. So that's awesome. Hey, do you guys have a piece of paper? 
Do you have a piece of paper to write something down, people? Answer me. Answer me. Answer me. Answer me. Matt, you use a dialer, is that correct? We do, yeah. You, you do, and you use Mojo Cells, I'm assuming? You got it. And why, Mojo, why reinvent the wheel? And Mojo Cells, you can go out there and just pick a list of phone numbers from a neighborhood, say I want 250 people around 1234 Main Street. That's right. Okay, everybody write that down, mojocells.com. Get a dialer. Call 100 or 200 people in an hour instead of your five all week. Come on. Whew. Okay. Hey, you know, I, I had the opportunity of having uh, Mr. Kevin Kaufman and Mr. Fred Weaver out this week, and he hung out at my house, and Matt, you know what we did? We went shooting a bunch of Rambo-style guns. You know how I like to be a hillbilly, right? I know, and I saw the photos of Kevin and Fred holding their weapons. Yeah, we got Nick out there, Nick Cameron, you know, we're out there blasting some stuff, and he taught it, taught at my offices in Seattle and Bellingham. I mean, those guys are smart. But, you know, what they told me is, remember a long time ago the, the mother-in-law tool where you could call and it would go straight to her voicemail and you could leave you could leave a message and it would show up as a missed call, but she couldn't answer it. Do you remember what that tool was called? Do I remember the tool that you used? Yeah, I think they're probably using either, either Sly Dial. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so exactly using Sly Dial or Sly Broadcast to let you call me the same message to multiple numbers at the same time. So here's what, yeah, that, that's what Kevin and Fred told me. And I, I've been using Sly Dial to call you guys back. Kidding. But uh, they talked about Sly Broadcast where I can put in 100 or 1,000 or 2,000 numbers and it automatically sends a voicemail to everybody. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's awesome, yeah, right? Slide yeah. broadcast. Have you used it yet? No. You know, I we were just talking the other day about what that would look like. I think it would be a fantastic tool on a Thursday to send that message out to your top 100 folks that are actively on a website looking and, and say, hey, I've got a limited time on Saturday from 3 to 4 to show you the hottest house on the market. Do you want to see it? Right? You could do get that out in front of 100 people. You're going to get responses. Well, smart. Hey Brad, one of our one of our people in the webinar, he got brevity valuations this week, and he's already got 15 listing leads. Congrats, Brad! Thanks for sharing that. Hey Matt, all right. So you're also working your database in your sphere. Tell us about how you uh, how, how you work your database in your sphere. Yeah. So I, I'll tell you my the best part of my database. Um, let, let's take past clients out to the side. Uh, is staying in touch with attorneys. Attorneys uh, that have to do estate work, family court work, those types of things are absolutely the best source of business that we have at the moment. Uh, they, if you stay in touch with attorneys, attorneys want easy access, easy information. They don't want to spend a lot of time. If you can develop a really good quarterly newsletter uh, for uh, attorneys based on what's going on in the real estate market, they'll love you forever. And that's a, a great one to reach out to is, is attorneys. Oh, well. I have attorneys that reach out to me all the time. Does that count? You know, sure, you certainly want them reaching out to you and <laughs> following up, but it should be in a direct response to something that you sent them. They're in a direct response to something I did normally. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, any any other sources of uh, leads that are pretty creative and cool? You know, Ben, I'll tell you the, one of the best things that we did this year. So I was, you know, I, I love teaching Keller Williams systems and models because I, I feel like it's changed me uh, and my business personally. But, you know, we were uh, not living a good 33 touch. We were living a good 22 touch. You know, we were doing a good effort but not the best effort. And I sent my team to Bold, and uh, Val, who is an ISA on our team, came back, and she said, you know what, we do this halfway. I want to take it over and do it right. We're doing stuff right out of Bold. Uh, now for our 33 touch and not reinventing the wheel and it, and we're having a great impact with that. That's good. That's good. Matt, let's talk about your structure. Today, as your team operates, how many people do you have and what are their positions? And I visited your team and uh, it's it's impressive. I, I enjoyed that uh, time that I spent there. So tell me, tell us about it. Yeah, so our model, Ben, is a little bit different. Our, we really want to have just a few people uh, that operate at a really high level instead of a lot of people doing a few transactions. Uh, so David runs the buyer team, and so we have David on the buy side, and he has had 
uh, either one or two showing agents consistently. And he David has. Sheen. How many deals is. did David do last year? Ah, uh, God, grief! Don't catch me off, ball, off guard. What he did last year, I can tell you. For the month of July, he did 18 deals in July with the showing with one showing agent. Holy crap! Can you guys people hear that? He did 18, 18 deals last month with one showing agent. Oh my gosh! I'm so happy I could poop a puppy. That is incredible. Yeah, 18 yeah. deals. He knocked it out of the park. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, David runs the buy side and he kicks butt. He would be on track to do, uh, I think, 136 deals this year. Mm. And then, uh, and like I said, he's got one showing agent full time and a, a part time showing agent. I and then we the have. Agents. What's that? Uh, how do you compensate the showing agents? So the, David compensates them out of his side of the transaction because they're his leverage, and uh, they're between 15 and 20 percent of the total. Uh, but it comes out of David's side because they're what helps him to get the deals done. And he's working a lot of your sign calls and your internet leads. Yeah, they are working uh, mostly IDX leads that come in and open houses. We're really good at open houses. Okay, so so what's your admin team look like? Uh, Admin-wise, we have uh, three full-time admin in the office, a listing coordinator, transaction coordinator, and a business slash operations manager. And then we have a remote short sale uh, negotiator uh, who's part-time, and then we have a remote virtual assistant who kind of supports the three in-house, doing lots of different type of tasks. Okay. And, what's your and then we have a runner who puts up all of our signs and lock boxes and takes photographs and measures homes and uh, she's a great addition to our team and then we have one listing specialist who replaced me last year and what uh, what are you what are you doing what's your job train and coach them and support them and, and help them be the best that they can be how do you take your business to the next level how how will I or how sh how do people in general? Mm -hmm. You mean me personally? Yeah. How are you going to take your business to the next level? Developing more people, right? Adding adding to our team and coaching people to get to a uh, to a top to their top performance. I'm I'm more interested in hitting four or five hundred transactions with a team of twelve than I am hitting those numbers with a team of fifty doing ten deals. So we want to find. Folks that are that want to be the best of the best, that want to perform at the highest rate, and and coach and train them and support them and encourage them to get to that opportunity for themselves. And and will your market support that? It will. It, it's gonna. We're gonna have to geographically go a little further than what has been our primary market, uh, but that's okay. We can get to within 40 minutes of our office. We can get to enough. Uh, there's enough business being transacted within that within 40 minutes to hit that number. Okay, so you, maybe you're going to go to another market and do the same thing. Yeah, that's on the the place that we would want to go next would be in Center City, Philadelphia, just because of traffic. You know, if there wasn't traffic, it wouldn't matter. But to make life a little easier and not spend so much time in the car, uh, expanding into this into Center City is the next natural area to go. Yeah, I get it. So, let's talk about uh, your your mistakes, because <laughs> there's a lot of them, Ben. That's right. a whole webinar. Yeah, uh, let's talk about it. So, okay. what are some of your biggest mistakes? Uh, um, I'll give you two big. One, it would be failed leadership. Um, you know, and, and totally not getting the difference between being a manager and being a leader. Um, and, and those are two different two different things. And I feel that I probably spent way too many years managing people, um, being a bit of a bully. You know, I tell people every once in a while that my, you know, my management style was the seagull approach, right? Swoop in and kind of crap on everybody and swoop out the door again. Uh, yeah, so I, I think getting, yeah, you know, so so getting real with what it means to lead people and to care about people and and to to uh, invest in them with coaching and training and, and do that um, would be the, the best thing that we've done. But the mistakes, I would say, really start with failed leadership 
uh, a failure to recognize and understand uh, how to help talented people grow. Um, and then, um, you know, it was interesting, I don't know if you remember this, but we were in, a, this is another mastermind that we were in, and uh, Gary looked at me and said, you know, your problem is you abdicate, you don't delegate, right? You just give away the job and expect people to do it, and you stop holding them accountable and encouraging them, and that would be for sure, right? So here, you take the job and you run with it, and I'll see you in a month, and I hope you perform. So abdicating instead of delegating and encouraging, um, those would be my biggest two biggest failures, and then the third would be uh, resting on my laurels and not prospecting uh, up until the last year, allowing my uh, sphere to do the heavy lifting, allowing past clients to send me referrals, and, and being call reluctant and not picking up the phone for way too many years and just saying, eh, what comes my way comes my way. Um, so that fear of picking up the phone, the fear of calling people, um, the fear of, building, of bringing in too many leads and not being able to service them. So just a lot of fear-based responses instead of uh, well-thought-out, calculated, coached, accountable responses. What about uh, uh, money mistakes? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> right? So um, I, I, I've shared before because I, I teach a class called Agent Financials, which is all about how to, to manage... Uh, the, the money that you bring in to a real estate team. Um, back in, you know, when I started in real estate, um, I didn't really think about um, about being self-employed and saving enough money to pay taxes. You know, I came from a world where I was on a, a salaried employee. And so in, in 2007, I didn't really save enough money to pay my taxes. And then I'm like, oh, man, now i got a big tax bill. Well, so what? I'll just go out and sell more homes and we'll pay it. And then 2008 comes along and you're sick and in the hospital and laying in a hospital bed and the market crashes and you know I allowed that stuff to linger for too long and you and I have talked openly about this I allowed uh, tax liabilities to build up too fast and didn't get ahead of them and um, spent beyond my means uh, as money came in so I had to have a real reality check to uh, to buckle down and, and get those things paid and, and to live within my means and, and to be far more careful so money was a real challenge. You know, I went from making sixty-seven thousand dollars to four hundred thousand dollars in twenty-four months, and so I changed my lifestyle, and I wasn't cautious and careful, and uh, I allowed that to to get out of control. So, and then it took some rude awakenings before I got that back to a, a responsible place, and it was just, uh, uh, you know, that was that was my fault, and I had to own it and had to fix it, and in much better place for it. And how do you look at spending now? Yeah, so totally different. You know, I, you know, Ben, you know me. I like to, I do like to spend money. I like to, to, to vacation. I like to travel well, and and I'm to thinking do that. about more in your business, Matt, because you have the right to spend your personal money however you want. And you do good investments, but what about in your business? How do you make those decisions now? Yeah, well, so that, so I live on a budget, right? So I, I like to spend money personally, but I start by focusing on my on my business, and so by running a budget by making sure that we're in a place where we're driving 35 to 40 percent net profits to the bottom line, making decisions on whether we should add or, or uh, spend more money based on revenue and not based on, right, spend the money now so you can make it never works. It needs to be, you know, make the money now and then spend it on the next adventure is, is the key to, long, to longevity financially. Huh. Now, uh, what's your future look like, Matt? What do you want to go work on? What, what's you know, you know we, we do all this thing for a reason because we want something more out of life or there's something we're excited about. Tell us about what you're excited about and what you're earning the right to, to have in your world. So part of the part of things uh, that we're looking at is expanding uh, a little bit internationally uh, and doing some cool things uh, with uh, worldwide and, and taking that to the next level. It's about expanding the team locally. Um, but, you know, all of this comes back to uh, the topic you know, that we were kicking off for today is is really about leads, right? And it's it's about your willingness to leave no lead unturned and, and to go after leads uh, nonstop. And uh, anything personally? Personal goals? Yeah. Um, my personal goals, my biggest focus personally right now, uh, besides some fun uh, trips and stuff like that, is all really focused on uh, being debt-free so that you have the ability to do 
to take advantage of these opportunities when they come along. Hey, if, if you guys are in the audience, type something in the chat box for me real quick. Okay. So <clears throat> we're going to do something funny here. It sounds like I'm clicking around here, and, and my friend Anita is probably mad at me because I'm making lots of uh, noise. My computer froze, Matt, so I can't. I can't do anything right now other than talk. Isn't that amazing? It is amazing. So let's let's keep going and see what we can do. I'm going to pull a rabbit out of my tush, and we're not going to be able to progress the slide, so that's cool. So look, the other part of this call that we we're going to talk about was old leads. And Matt, you've been in the business a really long time like me, and, and you end up with the Boomtown IDX leads or the sign calls from a long time ago. And uh, sometimes we ignore those things. And what I found is that there is an amazing amount of diamonds sitting in that in that backyard that we aren't prospecting. Yeah. So well, the old leads that I was thinking about were things like uh, old internet registrations, old sign calls, maybe deals that had died in the past. And, yeah. and they weren't doing business that so we can get back in touch with, et cetera. And I did something the other day, and I downloaded all of my IDX leads, uh, and I sent them an all my IDX buyer leads, Matt, and I sent them an email that said, hey, your home may be worth way more than you think. Find out here. And I gave them a link to my Brevity Valuation site. And uh, on that site, uh, they could you know type in their address, et cetera. We got 1,000 listing leads that day from that email. Wow. What we've been doing also is we go through all these old IDX leads. You know, like you, you give 100 leads to an agent and they start working on them, but they get frustrated because 50 of them aren't responding. So what we've been asking them to do is to give them back to us. And when they give those back to us, uh, we put them into a bucket to have our ISA uh, call them, the, our inside sales agent. Do you have your, uh, an ISA calling internet leads? We do, and can I give you two quick success stories? Here's in less than 30 seconds. Here you go. Uh, last week, no, it'll be two weeks ago, David closed a buyer that he met at the very first open house he ever hosted four and a half years ago, and that was all about getting them into an IDX solution uh, where they were he could track them and keep them warm. And talking about four and a half years of doing that. And we also uh, put under contract uh, last uh, within the last six weeks, I can't tell you the exact date, one of the very first registrations on our Boomtown website from five years ago. And so the key is, you know, if the key to growth in a real estate sales business is your willingness to stay on top of people because we know that, especially with IDX leads, that most of them are, you know, they're, they're just dipping their toe into looking. And so the difference between uh, an agent who's growing their business and an agent whose business is plateaued or stagnant is your never-ending willingness to pick up the phone and call those folks until they say, please remove me from your list and don't call me again, and then you do that out of respect. Until somebody says that, you have got to be willing. I feel the same way is true about the old canceled and expires. If they canceled three years ago, they had their hand up and said, I want to sell my home, right? You keep calling them every day until over and over and over again until they say remove from your list because you may not. I think what people do is they call them once they don't answer, call again they don't answer, and then they put them in the dead file. The difference between my team succeeding and my team losing is our willingness to make 200 phone calls a day and and go after these folks that are years old from leads and and staying on top of it. Yeah. I, you know, you see, my business kind of grows every single year, and, and sometimes it has nothing to do with what I'm doing this year. It just has something to do with that I've kept in touch with all the leads that have registered last year, the year before, and for the last five, six, seven, eight years. Your business continues to grow if you continue to communicate uh, with those people. Now, let's talk a little bit about getting dead leads to be active. Yeah. And, and maybe... Uh, us calling them. Any thoughts on what you would say to a really old lead in the system? I do. I and here's the key. I think we have to reach out to those old 
quote unquote dead leads in as many different ways as possible, you may find out that by texting them, you may get a response where they wouldn't have picked up the phone. Right? I can't tell you the last time I answered my cell phone if I had an unknown caller, if someone wasn't in my contact list, where I would just pick up the phone and be willing to, to answer that call. I always let it go to voicemail. Um, if you look at something like a system like bettervoice.com you know, and have some canned uh, voicemails that you can, or a text message that you can send out and look at some of those ways, I think you'll kick up more dirt. So I would just have, uh, you know, send out a quick text and say, you know, uh, I didn't want to interrupt your day, but I want you to know about, right? And, and, and send them a link to something or uh, say, you know, here's a, ho ho uh, a house that's on the market that's, you know, here's a sneak peek on a house coming on the market this weekend. But I, I think you have to look at it, phone call, text, email, phone call, text, email, and figure out which way will they engage with you. Mm, yeah. You know what I, I like about, uh, let's talk about text for a while. Yeah. I, I have a couple of strategies that we use for converting uh, internet leads, especially old ones, is sometimes I'll just text them with their name and a question mark. Because you ever got a text from somebody where you didn't recognize the number? How annoying is that? You pretty much have to respond back and say, who is this? Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and we get a large amount of communication started with leads by simply sending them a text that says, hey, or their name, question mark. Is this John? Mm, and yeah. then once they respond, you start the conversation because they know that you know that they're there now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But other text things you can do would just be simple, simple statements, things like, hey, do you want to go look at some homes this weekend, question mark, or uh, I found a couple of bank-owned properties that you might be interested in, question mark, or at some point you registered on my website and I was curious to see if you had a home that you wanted to sell, question mark. Like those sort of really quick responses are what gets people to actually engage and respond. And the lesson you learn from text is the brevity, not the brevity, the brevity of the responses is well, that you should I do think that in emails as well, right? Short yeah, sweet. less. Go ahead. Less is more, right? We used to have all these canned emails that were going on and on and on. And I think the simple question, are you free on Saturday from one to two? And then inside, I found three homes that you need to see. You know, it just right to the point, short and sweet. And you know, I was thinking about the other day, just sending one out that just says, check yes or no, right? Do you want to see this house on Saturday? There's a little. I, I think we. I think we put too much time and thought into it. I think we want to force people to, to engage with us by making it interactive and a quick yes or no question uh, to engage. At least getting them responding is the key. Yeah, I agree. So, what other kind of uh, email ideas can you think of just to put you on the spot? It, it's short and sweet, right? So, a, an engaging subject line. With two or three sentences and maybe a hyperlink out to the house you want to show them. No, it doesn't need to be hi, how are you, how you doing. Nobody's reading all that stuff. It's just it's noise. Quick thing. I was thinking about you today, based on what you said before. I found this house. Can I show it to you on Saturday at four? Yeah. Is 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 gonna win every day of the week. The thing that you do and I do that I think really helps convert these old leads is we pay attention to what properties they're actually looking at and when we send emails or texts we're talking about the things that they're doing like hey I see that you looked at 1234 Main Street I, I see that uh, um, you looked at this one twice or you printed a fire do you, do you, want, do you want me to meet you out there etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah uh, what about uh, scripts or things you say to them? Is there anything on the phone that would also help us? I, again, I think you know when you get people on the phone, less is more. And so just being really quick. So today, Ben, if I was calling you, if you were coming into Rehoboth, which is a, a resort town, you've been on our website, I might really just call and say, hey, Ben, Matt Fedick from Keller Williams Realty. I'm sure you're here to have a great weekend. There are two homes that meet your criteria that you've been searching for. I can show them to you tomorrow between five and six. Would that work, right? Just 
keeping it short and getting back to the value proposition is they want to see one or two homes and, and making that quick and short is the one that's going to win. Mm. Yeah, now, I agree. Nobody starts off, when, you're talk, when we're talking about old leads here, right? we're talking about old cold leads, nobody here is looking to be our best friend. The relationship with your real estate agent happens over time when we perform and we get the ones they want. In the beginning, all they want is access to a property or access to your knowledge, something that they can't get on their own. They can do the research on Zillow, they can do the research on Truly, they can do the research. What they need from us is what they can't have, which is market knowledge, sneak peek on a property that's not yet listed or come on the market. I'm not talking about pocket listings, I'm talking about getting them in on day one, right? So I'm not trying to start a debate on, on pocket listings, but the idea of of giving them something that they don't want that only you have and showing your value. And people think that the value is let me send you a list of available homes. That's not the value. They can get that online. The value is what you give them, which is access to a home which they couldn't get on their own, right? And then obviously the uh, the consultations that come behind it. I have this great like takeaway script that I like to use. So let's pretend that you're a you're a buyer for a second, Matt. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm calling you on the phone because you're some old lead. And and let's just kind of play with this for a second. Uh, ring ring. Hello. Hey, Matt, this is Ben Kinney, and I have been emailing you for the last uh, four or five years, actually, and I just want to just take a quick second to talk to you. I, I hope it's not an inconvenience. It'll only be a second. Are you still interested in um, in looking at homes? And, and just, Matt, I just want you to say I'm not quite ready yet. Yeah, I, yeah not at the moment, but thank you for your call. Hey, no problem, and I, and I really won't bother you uh, at all, Matt. I got to ask you one question. Since you're not ready, uh, I want to ask you for one favor. Would that be okay? Yeah, go ahead, Matt. Who do you know that I should know that might be interested in in something like a really good deal, a a property that was 10 to 15 percent off, like a bank owned or a short sale property in in the Bellingham area? And I know that you said that you weren't ready to buy right now, but uh, maybe you would know somebody that would want 10 to 15 percent off. How do you feel when well, I say that to you, know, Matt? Yeah, if it was the right, if it was the, if it was 10 or 15 percent off, you know, and it was a good deal, you know, I suppose I might be interested myself. And, and that's what you use that script for is to say, are these people seriously not ready, or are they generous enough that they would connect you with somebody that they did know that did want to buy? And that little takeaway script helps people decide if, or it helps you decide, is this person really blowing me off or not? Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and Ben, that's the whole key, right? We're talking about converting old dead leads and getting more people. I see some folks making comments. What about a buyer consultation or what about loan pre-approval? We're just talking about engaging in the conversation. Those things are important because we don't want to run around like door openers. What we're trying to talk about now is getting people to engage into a conversation so we can explain the value of a consultation and loan pre-approval later. But what we're talking about now is how do we get our business to the next level? How do you add another 20% to your bottom line? And that's these old dead leads and not ignoring them. Yeah, yeah. You know, my my kind of favorite script to make my team team remember is simply the Best Buy script. And it's just something like, Matt, uh, would you by chance be interested in a really good deal? I always want a deal. Kind of, I'll, I, I want to see a deal. Can you think of what site, type of a jerk face would say no to that? No. Every, I mean, everybody wants a deal. And even if it's not for them, they know they have a friend at work that's looking for a deal. They know people want deals. Every, and people want to feel special like they're on the inside. That's why the, all these loyalty things work and uh, if you look at outside of real estate, people are engaged in the VIP access, and people want to feel like they're getting a deal or that they're special or there's something more value to them than what somebody else is going to get. Mm -hmm. The, the follow-up question that I asked to that is, the reason I asked if you wanted a good deal, Matt, is I have what I consider to be a list of the 10 best-priced properties in Bellingham, and I was wondering if you would like to get together and, and go over these and see if there's any of these are a match for you. Do you want to just email me the list and I'll look at them? 
uh, unfortunately, Matt, all I have is a printed version. And since these are the homes that are going to sell fast, I really reserve these for people that I've met with because I've done a lot of searching to make sure that these are the right ones. And I'm more than willing to meet you at your house. I'm more than willing to meet you at Starbucks and buy you a coffee or invite you to come into my office. Is there one of those three things that would work really well for you? Sure, if you want to meet for coffee over lunch sometime, that would be fine. And Steve Hudson just asked, I, my amazing helper, Aaron, just ran out to my car and grabbed my laptop, so I can't change slides, but at least I can see some chat now, is, uh, is how do you select the 10 best deals? And Steve, I don't select them until after I've spoken to him because what I want to do is find the best properties that match the criteria he's looking for because he only may want to be in this neighborhood or at this price point etc so once you get a response I just say let me ask you a couple of pre-qualification questions what area you want what's your price range you prefer to be in etc etc and then I come up with a list and I'll go in the MLS and sort by short sales foreclosures uh, find the probate sales or the you know that sort of stuff and then I'll just bring bring a list of teasers of properties that I think might be a good match for them and it's been really 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 successful for us well yeah and now, even even in a mark even in a seller's market there's good deals because sometimes the good deal happens on on day one that it gets listed right so there's always good deals I don't believe that even in, in a uh, seller's market in it cause you know, we're talking to people all over the country, and the whole country is not in the seller's market by any stretch of the means. Uh, you know, there's pockets, and some of it's really starting to stable uh, stabilize again and head back into a neutral market. But there's always a good deal uh, out there. I don't care what market you're in. There's always a deal out there to be found. How many people on the call right now answering the chat box or finding this conversation with Matt uh, riveting and helpful? Type that in. I need to make sure my chat box is working as well. How do you spell riveting? <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know how to spell really at all. Matt, who else in, um, in our world could help us start working these internet leads if we don't have them in front of, or if we just don't have personally enough time? Yeah, there's, I would be tag teaming every lead with, with your mortgage professional. People may be more interested in talking about mortgage rates, about re uh, repairing their credit, about uh, special financing opportunities, you know, the the lenders are are coming back out with some great products again that will be really attractive to people, which could include less money down than they thought, or buying, uh, you know, getting on some type of adjustable rate that could be down to one one and a half percent. So I I would absolutely engage. I would sit down, divide up all these old leads, and I would tag team them with with uh, my loan officer. Mm, that's a good idea. Actually, that wasn't even on my list. Uh, my, my list included like interns. Okay. We've been posting ads on Craigslist and getting interns to come in and work for free for three months. And then if they do a good job at that, at the end of that period, we're, we're able to hire them and give them a position. If they suck, they at least leave with something on their resume as, a, as an opportunity. They got to have some jobs on them. But also virtual assistants. Matt, have you ever used virtual assistants to uh, help you communicate with customers? We do uh, transactionally. We have, I have not done it for uh, lead generation, but I'm absolutely not opposed to it. I think it, there's no reason not to. Well, the boy wonder from Austin, Tim Heil, yeah. uh, has really mastered using virtual assistants to work leads and prospect for them and create what he calls nurtures. In, in his world, what he does is he sorts through all of his leads until he has a decent conversation with somebody. Then he calls them a nurture and gives them to an agent to start working to get them closer. So they sort through all the cold, find the warms, and let the warms be worked by the agents till they become hot. So I thought that was kind of a good idea. Or we could do things like we could have an ISA work them. Uh, we could, uh, like I do on my team, I have all the new agents work it. So when a new agent joins the team, I might assign them 100 old leads for them to work through just so they can get practice calling and emailing and try to dig some gold up. And every time they come up with some, some person that wants to work with them, and the funny thing is, is on our team, all those people were previously assigned to another agent, and that agent could not get them to respond or could not get them to do business with them, and a brand new person pulls out a transaction from it. Anything you'd add to that, that list? No, I think the key is, and you said it, the gold is in the difference between what you did in 2013 
and how strong you're going to finish 2014 is going to be in these old leads. This is where you're going to make your money for the third and fourth quarter of the year. And so it's going to come from your willingness to call them yourself, to partner with your mortgage professional, to get somebody else to help scrub them with you, to swap them around. But there is gold uh, in, in these old leads. But it comes from a desire, a willingness to not just sit around and wait for somebody to call you, but you got to pick it up and make it happen. So let's let's talk about maybe we have some new agents on the team, or we have some experienced people like like us on the call as well. I see some rock stars out there like Devin Doherty and and Jeff Ruby, and just some great great producers out there in the world. Uh, how can we get more old leads? Any ideas, Matt? Where can you get the old leads? Yeah. Yeah. I would go back to any expired, canceled, withdrawn that is within the last five years and that has not relisted because they have they are, they raised their hand. They wanted they were motivated to move at one point and I'll be going through all of those right now. I, I think that's uh brilliant. And we actually went all the way back to two thousand seven. So there you go. That's one idea to go to old leads. I tell you what I did is is there's lots of agents in your market that are really good at internet lead generation and haven't been great at closing or people in your market that are getting out of the business or are frustrated or might have paid for Boomtown or Market Leader or, or something and they have a whole list of leads in there. I've paid as much as a dollar per lead for a database of 18,000 old ones. So that cost me $18,000 and we were able to turn that into a couple hundred in the first year. So other agents in your market, people getting out of the business or people that just don't close a lot but they have a lot of leads, might be a great place for you guys to start. Any thoughts on that, Matt? Yeah, I, if somebody came to me tomorrow and said, hey, I'm, I'm getting out of the business or I've got an old uh, you know, websites in here, the old registrations, I'd pay money to have those names and phone numbers to call. So we should yeah. start advertising to agents that we'll pay you a dollar for every old lead that you have in your system that came from an IDX anywhere in the U.S. because you and I could just retire on reselling those leads or just setting appointments and referring them out to people. That'd be hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, why not? So, Matt, what did we learn today? What, or what can you summarize up for the people about? Uh, about how do they get rid of these things that are stopping them and be more successful, or, or what are a couple tips that we could give them that you've learned along the way? Well, the first thing starts with putting the excuses aside and not having excuses. It's a seller's market. There's no inventory. There, you know, these people won't return my phone call. There's no good leads. You got to get rid of that mindset. You've got to decide that you're going to take these old leads, these old registrations. You're going to pick up the phone and you're going to call them. Right? Nobody ever got shot. Nobody ever got killed by, by the, picking up the phone and calling an old lead. Um, that would be my first thing is just is make that decision. Number two, have somebody hold you accountable to it. Put it out there and say, I'm making these calls, and I want somebody to check in with me by 3 o'clock and, and see how many calls I made and have an accountability partner that really walks through it with you and holds you accountable. Uh, number three, reach out to people in multiple ways to see how they want to engage. Voice by making voice phone calls, text messages, and emails, which one will they engage in, and then using that as the method to get them on there. Uh, and be willing to look for these old folks. You know, it's going to take a while. You're going to have to kiss a lot of toads to get, you know, to, get to the prince or princess, but there's, there's gold in these uh, old leads, and you just got to be willing to do it. Yeah, I, I think that's all smart advice. I was talking to... Fred and Kevin, I think the other day, and I just said, hey, when we hire a new person, let's put them on the phone and say, I need you before you come in and you start your first day, I need you to dial through these 500 people and at least get 500 no's. Because I know that if somebody's been told no 500 times before they start day one with me, they're going to be used to it and, and willing to do it. If somebody can't make that first 500 calls and get that first 500 no's, they're just probably not a match for, for my business model. Thoughts on that? Yeah, if you've got to be willing. I mean, think about it this way, right? If you want to get one good lead, one good appointment a day, you're going to have to get 100 to 150 no's. So the sooner you get the 150 no's out of the way, you're going to get the appointment. It takes... There are, and 
it's 99 no's to get a yes. So it's just, you've got to understand that. You can't take it personally. It's not a personal rejection of you. And the sooner you understand that one more no is closer to yes, the better off you'll be in this business. Hey, our, our friend on the call, Al, just said a bad agent is a dead agent. That's, that's, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, everybody on the call, I promise you, if you need some listing leads, you have to check out Brevity Valuations. If you do that, I'll give you a copy of the emails that I send my, my past clients and leads, a copy of the mailers that we've been sending out in the Facebook ads, or if you need us to, we'll run the Facebook ads for you and the pay-per-click ads to generate those seller leads. And I think you're going to average less than $5 a lead on all those. So if you need more listings in your business, as you all know, listings are leverage and listings create buyer leads. Let's start with that. Emily will send out the demo request for Brivity, the core product to manage your business, Brivity valuations to generate more leads, and city guys to be a local expert. Just when, when you type into the chat box, just put a BV if you want Brivity valuations demo, or just type in Brivity or BR if you want a Brivity core demo if you want to get your admin more effective. And if you want a city guy, just type in city after your name into the chat box. Uh, we're going to be online answering questions for the next 15 minutes as we end this call. Everybody, do me a favor, type into the chat box, and, and just let's tell Matt how absolutely amazing, wonderful, and inspiring he is. He is. And Matt, I need to let you get back to your vacation on the beach with your loved ones and your office down there. Thanks for your time and, and for being such a good friend of mine. Uh, Matt, you're a, you're a good dude. Thanks. I'm really glad to be here, and I appreciate the opportunity to share some ideas, and uh, happy to help in any way. Ben, you've been really instrumental in holding me accountable and supporting me, so I'm glad to, to do the same, so thank you. One little last note for you, Matt, is since you're an organizer, you can't end the webinar. You just got to shut your computer, if that's cool. Yeah, I'll be here for a little bit, so I'm happy to, to join in for a little bit longer if you'd like. Everybody else, we're answering chats on the background. We're going to do a call in two weeks, uh, try to get two in in September. Let us know uh, if you can make it. Thanks for being here today, and sorry about the screw-up with my computer. And Anita, I'll try to chew less into the phone. Have a good day, guys.